AMD gives us more details on Ryzen 7000. The Witcher 3 next-gen update is... Oh boy, and AMD's RX 6950 XT gets a price. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And several of you continue to share your breakfast with me over on Twitter using the hashtag breakfast. And here's what we got. We got Mr. Coonan enjoying some nice butter and toast. We got Jay enjoying some natty ice, I guess. Good <laughs> for you. We got Pablo with some chicken buggies, which is great. I think he meant to say chicken nuggies, but I think it's chicken buggies. I like that you're also watching hot news while you're enjoying your breakfast. We got Brian coming in with toast and bacon and eggs and a ton of memory on the side. We got Peruse with Ahmad, Earl Grey black tea and Oreos for breakfast. My goodness, friends. As well as Aldo coming in with some venti latte with vanilla and Splenda while he's watching his hot news. Thank you guys so much for submitting your breakfast. I'd like to see it. If you guys want to continue to send it over over on Twitter, you can do so using the hashtag breakfast and maybe we'll check it out here. Maybe not every day, but well, uh, we'll enjoy it, but we're going to also enjoy AMD's next generation of CPUs. The Ryzen 7000 is something that we're anticipating to coming out later this year. And in AMD's Meet the Experts webinar, they discussed a little bit about what we can expect out of Raphael, which is the code name for the next generation CPUs. And essentially it comes down to the fact that it's going to be a DDR5 platform, but then it will also be extremely overclockable, according to Joseph Tao saying that they're going to try to make a big splash with overclocking and I'll just kind of leave it there. But speeds that you maybe thought couldn't be possible may be possible with this overclocking spec. This is something that is actually rather exciting to hear out of AMD that they're going to continue to try to push overclocking in the abilities of what AMD can provide. Maybe the CPUs won't be as overclockable as we've been kind of seeing from the 5800X3D. Maybe 3D vCache won't have enough tolerance when it comes to voltage. But if we could get extra memory overclocking, we could start seeing performance tweaks come in on that front, which could make it rather exciting. I'm excited to see what AMD has for Zen 4. The 5800X 3D does look to be a rather good chip if you're currently in the market to upgrade right now. Otherwise, I personally will be holding off for Zen 4. But let me know what you think of extreme overclocking on the memory down below in the comments. But Intel wants you to think that they're going net zero on those greenhouse gases by 2040 in their global operation. This is something that Intel has come out and said that they're pledging to achieve when it comes to their scope scope one and scope two emissions, which are the greenhouse gas emissions that Intel specifically does. And they're going to do that by achieving 100% renewable electricity, as well as investing $300 million in energy conservation and build new factories that meet certain building codes, as well as trying to identify greener chemicals that they can use that have lower footprints. So scope one and scope two essentially refers to their manufacturing and their energy generation and transmission. It does not include, however, their raw materials, extraction, manufacturing and process processing, which is how they actually get all of the things that they make for their chips, as well as the processing and assembly by OEMs and the use of products. They're not really touching those because at least the how the use of their products is not really under their control. Probably the raw materials extraction, they could influence some leverage on that. However, Intel has announced efforts in the past to combat the risk of slavery when it comes to some of their suppliers and making sure that they're clear on that front. So it's not as if Intel hasn't influenced how they get their raw materials that they put in their chips in the past, maybe we could see them implementing something like a greener setup for the mining of materials, but this is at least a decent first step by them. But while Intel's trying to save energy, Asus wants to deliver more to your PC. We've talked about how the next generation of GPUs are expected to be massive, power hungry chips consuming as much as six to 700 watts. And Asus is coming out with the ROG Thor 1600 watt titanium power supply to help deliver all of that power, especially if you're also gonna combine it with a high end CPU, this might actually be a necessary purchase for your next generation setup as opposed to just an overkill one. And we might actually see that CPU at Computex 2022. Titra, the company who runs Computex, announcing that it will be happening this year, both in person and digital. From May 24th to 27th, Computex will be taking place. It's not quite clear what this means for like the tech press and people like us who have traveled to Computex in the past, especially given the state of Taiwan's lockdown with regard 
regards to COVID. It probably will mean that we won't be able to go, but they will still have a physical in-person for people who live in Taiwan. I've always had a ton of fun at Computex. If there's one conference that I want to go to, it's that one. And I can't wait for it to finally open back up where everybody in the tech media is actually going to it. But now we're going to talk about crypto stocks. Bitcoin's actually up 4.2% on the day to be at 41,209, having a nice little increase over the last few hours. Ethereum's up 3.5% to be at just over $3,098. And Dogecoin's up 2.3% to be at 13.9 cents. And T-Mobile is up to give you Google Photos back, at least the unlimited storage version of it. This is something that Google got rid of, where if you had a compressed version of your photos saved on Google Photos, you could have an unlimited amount. They did away with that. However, T-Mobile is bringing that back for a $15 a month Google One plan, which includes two terabytes of shareable space, and then the unlimited full resolution photo and video storage that people came to depend on Google Photos for. And then when they said, hey, you can't store it here anymore, some people had to scramble to actually like offload it because they were gonna charge them a whole heckin' lot to keep their footage. It's kind of good, $15 a month. It's a little expensive, but for the people who are actively using this, this might be a good little plan that they could potentially pick up. But you won't be able to pick up the next generation update of The Witcher 3 anytime soon. CD Projekt Red announcing that they are delaying it indefinitely. They said that they're gonna have their in-house development team conduct the remaining work on the next-gen version of The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, and they're currently evaluating the scope of work to be done, and thus have to postpone the Q2 release until further notice. This was being outsourced to a different company who was actually doing all of the ray tracing and remastering, and it appears that CD Projekt Red is not happy with them, so they're bringing it back in-house. And given the state of what Cyberpunk looked like and the visual fidelity that CD Projekt Red was able to achieve with the Red Engine. I'm actually really excited for this, so I'm kind of bummed that it's gonna take longer. I'm actually not sure how much longer I'm gonna wait, and if it comes out, I mean, it's supposed to be a free update. I, I just don't know if I'm gonna replay it at that point, but maybe, probably I will. Are you bummed by The Witcher 3 being delayed? Let me know down below in the comments, and we finally know what the pricing, at least the retail pricing of the 6950 XT looks to be. This is AMD's next GPU that's supposed to be coming out with faster memory bandwidth, and according to some Australian retailers, it's gonna be about 2,400 US dollars. Now that's a direct conversion from the Australian dollars, so take this with a grain of salt, but given the same retailer's pricing of their 3090 Ti, it looks like they're being priced roughly equivalent. It does appear that the next X50 launch of AMD's GPUs have been delayed until May 10th. Originally, they were supposed to be coming out in just about a week on April 20th, but they have been pushed back. However, while the price does look really hard to swallow, I will note the fact that the 3090 Ti, at least at pre-release retailer prices, was pushing around $4,000. But if you go on Newegg right now, you can find two GPUs in stock that are very close to that 1999 MSRP that the 3090 Ti is supposed to be at. So don't necessarily take pre-release pricing as an indication of what AMD is going to charge. I would suspect that they're probably going to keep it in that $999 or potentially even $1299 price range because they're not updating much on the X50 refresh. It's really just the memory that's getting a refresh according to what we know. AMD hasn't disclosed this publicly, but I don't see it costing too much more than the current generation 6900 XT. Although I am curious, are any of you planning on picking up the X50 refresh from AMD or is this something that you just, you're gonna skip and wait until the RX 7000 series comes out? I wanna hear from you down below in the comments. And with that being said, I'm done with the hot news today. Don't forget to tweet what you're having for breakfast using the hashtag breakfast and I'd love to see you here for hot news tomorrow, my friends. Cheerios.